You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades and aloe vera lubricating strip and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are going to ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors. We're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. In the Crease is back. The show about anything that crosses my path returns Sunday, October 15th at 8 p.m. Eastern. Where are we going this time, Dad? Great question, EP. Season 3 is back with the fourth annual Nobel Prize show. Physics, chemistry, medicine, literature, economic sciences, and of course, we will find out if the midget from Ukraine somehow, somehow manages to win the Nobel Peace Prize. All of this and more on episode 43 of In the Crease, October 15th, here on KLRNRadio.com. Today, this breakfast isn't just breakfast. It might be the first McDonald's breakfast you're having at McDonald's again. This lunch might be a weekly tradition you hadn't had in weeks. And this dinner might be the first one you bought for not just you in a while. Whatever this order is for you, McDonald's. We'll be here to take it. Get more of the chicken you love with a delicious McChicken sandwich for $1. And for an extra buck, add a refreshing Dr. Pepper. Dining rooms are starting to reopen in certain communities. At participating McDonald's, cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. In uncertain times, we could use someone to lean on. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma will stand by you with plan options to fit your budget. If you've recently lost your job, had a baby, or moved, you can still get the health care coverage you and your family need. Financial help may be available for those who qualify. Call 855-452-BLUE or visit hereforyouok.com to see if you're eligible to enroll. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma, a division of Healthcare Service Corporation, a mutual legal reserve company. Welcome, everybody. We just have to start the show. That's all there is to it. Here's what's going. Here's what happens. Uh, every, first of all, uh, welcome. Uh, it's the Loftus Party Podcast. My name is is Michael. I'm thrilled to be here. This is a. I'm very much looking forward to this one. I gotta get some stuff off my chest. So lock and lock and load, bitches. Hold on to your butts. Okay, so here's here's where how I want to start the show. Uh, I do research, right? I don't want to just uh, first of all, you know, I gotta do my little jokes and my little spin and my little insight. That's you know that happens, but it doesn't happen by magic. 
Uh, there's still a little bit of research that I have to do. And then here's what happens. Here's what happens, everybody. I start doing research, uh, and then I start getting mad. <laughs> I start getting mad. Uh, and then I'm like, well, I gotta lighten it up. I gotta, so, so I go through, uh, when I'm, when I'm practicing my guitar, I do like little snippets of songs, like little things will just pop into my head and I don't want to forget them. So I record them. So I'm like, oh, maybe I can kind of like weave those in to the show. Hey, and if you listen to the show and you're like, man, I wish that guy would stop playing his guitar so much. Guess what? Fuck you. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working over here. Uh, it's it's what I like. And if I'm not going to do what I like, why am I even doing the show? All right. So here's what we got coming up. Y you better know I'm going to uh, get into this whole uh, Israel thing. Here's uh, I'm going to get into Israel. We're going to talk a lot about Israel. There's many, 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 many aspects to this. And then we're going to talk about uh, the speakership in Congress, let me look at my notes, the speakership and the narrative. Um, we're going to talk some entertainment. I got some very, it's very funny. Uh, what What's going on with, with Marvel and, and the show Daredevil and, and what they're doing at South Park. And then we got Halloween coming up across. And then what, what am I saying here? Oh yeah. And the people who are still into Star Wars, we're going to, we're going to make fun of them. Okay. Oh, and, and toxic masculinity. Holy shit. Holy shit. It's going to be great. It's, well, I'm going to, I'm going to, as always, every week, I'm going to strive for it to be great. What am I doing? All right. So I also want to say this, like right out of the gate. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the show. Uh, one of my, uh, you got to call it something I have to stay on top of. Something that I have to stay on top of. Uh, are the numbers and the ratings and the downloads and the blah, blah, blah. I'm pretty good about it, uh, with YouTube. Uh, we're, you know, I, I, it feels like we're being suppressed on YouTube. And I want to say, uh, a giant thank you, uh, to everybody for their support for, for, for this show, the podcast, the YouTube channel. Yes, we're on Rumble as well. Uh, TikTok. TikTok has just been like insane. TikTok is just like finding diamonds in the sand. Good luck getting rid of that app. <laughs> Everybody's over there. But I want a, a special shout out to the people who are supportive on uh, Patreon and also Locals. Uh, the, the extra segment. There'll be an extra segment here that will be put on Patreon. It'll also be up on Locals. The comments. That's what I want to get into uh, a little bit. The, uh, yeah, there's, there's like hurtful stuff. <laughs> that's, that's, that's put on, uh, uh, on YouTube and, and all that wonderful stuff. But there's also, it's the, it's the words of encouragement. I, when you go on, on YouTube and somebody leaves a comment like, dude, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. Thank you for, and then people will be like, I can't believe you don't have more uh, subs, this is criminal, that kind of stuff. It's, uh, it goes a long way. It goes a long way. And I guess if you take, if you take the good, you also have to take the bad as well. You know, e either you look at all of them or you don't look. I'm looking at all of them. I am just, I love it. This guy, uh, some dude wrote one. There's a reason you're, why you're not famous. <laughs> <laughs> and uh let's click on the, let's click on his name. Let's say yeah. He uh he doesn't even make content. He doesn't <laughs> he's got nothing. <laughs> so there you go. All right. So l let's jump in. Let let's begin. Uh and but I must I must warn you the reason I was giggling so much at the top of the show was because of uh what I think is a uh, a, f a funny discovery, but we'll, we'll get to that later. Can I remember the, uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember the theme song. I, I don't want to call it the theme song. It's the tune I do. 
It's a little chord progression that I do at the beginning of the show. I do it for me and some of you. Some of you, whatever. It should be more rocking. Podcast. The Loftus Party Podcast. So just grab your ass. And let's start the show. That's a podcast. He's doing it again. The Loftus Party Podcast. Maybe some Sandler too. Whoopity do. Let's go with the show right now. When I do get too angry, uh, as, as this little guitar is my emotional support animal, uh, I have what I think. Maybe I should just start with it. Oh, no, I'm not going to. I'll, I'll get there. We'll do that. We'll do that in the next segment. Because once once I go down that path, uh, I don't know if there's going to, if it's going to entertain me so much, I don't know if I'll be able to come back from it. I really don't. And I do want to have some, uh, some, some substance, some meat and potatoes to the show, which is why we're all here. So let's, let's, uh, let's talk about uh, Israel real quick. And, and before I, I don't want to get into like, there's going to be death toll talk and all that. Don't worry. It, there will be like a, a morbid, uh, aspect to it. But I, I want to say this, uh, cause this happened to me on, on Fox business last week. Uh, I was on with a, with a dude, uh, a GOP guy, uh, and we were talking about this was before the the attack on on Israel. Uh, oh, it was the GOP speakership? It was the oh the, the you know they got rid of Kevin McCarthy and oh it's still the house is in disarray and how will we function as a country and all oh, wah, wah, wah. and this guy is like uh, oh see because that's what we're talking about now. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about Hunter Biden. We're not talking about Joe Biden. We're not talking about the Biden. And I'm, and I, I said to the guy, and I think it made the air, uh, dude, you're allowed to talk about whatever you want to talk about. Okay. No one's, no one's telling you. No one, no one is going, listen, you got to talk about Kevin McCarthy and Matt Gates or else. Like you literally, I mean, I don't know how many times you're going to get invited back. They could invite you on onto a TV show. Uh, and, and it's it's an easy pivot, guy, when they're like, so what do you think about the house? Well, you know, I think, uh, you know, the timing isn't the best because right now my concern is Hunter Biden and Joe Biden and the Biden family crime because we're finding out more every day. And this committee, see how I did that? See how I did that there? So you get to pick, you get to pick your own narrative. And yes, we will be getting into the Joe Biden of it all, because there is new stuff coming out. Now, this is uh, my program, and I'm going to go with what emotionally uh, and intellectually uh, I want to talk about. There will be time uh, for Joe Biden. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, put my hopes in uh, the, 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 the people who, in the GOP who've been slow walking this shit for years. Um, I'll still be on them. I'll still be on them. And we're going to get to the Jim Jordan of it all. But let's start with, let's start with Israel. Cause to me, uh, it all, it, it encapsulates everything, everything. Uh, the woke ideology, the reminder that the world is an incredibly dangerous place and there are horrible people in this world. And you have to be able to defend yourself and you have to be able to talk about this stuff and you have to be uh, in the know and knowledgeable and sweet Lord in heaven, the Second Amendment. <whistles> okay, so... Um, and the, oh, and then I want to get to the, uh, the false flag of it all and the narrative of it all. Uh, I'll say this about the, uh, the, the false flag. I've, listen, I got friends, uh, uh, 
in the in the Jewish community all over the place. I'm very happy about that. I'm I'm very pleased about that. And there's a and there's an email chain that I'm on where it's literally I haven't dug in too deep to it because I don't think that there's a uh, a lot at the end of the the rainbow here. All these people are going, oh, there's no way the Israeli intelligence community could have failed this badly. Oh, this was a, oh, did someone allow this to happen? And like Charlie Kirk was on the news or on some program the other day <clears throat> saying that, oh, I'm not saying, just like raising the specter of, oh, uh, there's no way the Israeli intelligence community, blah, blah, blah. H here's what I'll say to all that. You guys keep going. You, you keep, keep, you keep trying to figure that out. Uh, and, and the rest of us, uh, will, will work on making sure more innocent people aren't being slaughtered. How about that? So, so go check that out. Uh, and, and find out about the, okay, that's great. Here, here's what, and this is just super harsh. Let's say, just for the sake of discussion, that uh, the Israeli intelligence community is like, oh my gosh, uh, looks like there's going to be some kind of an attack. Oh, let's 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 let it happen. Okay, that's that's bad. You know what's really bad? Uh, the people who did the attack. It doesn't seem like. They had a hard time getting a bunch of uh, uh, Hamas people together to get on uh, paragliders and get weapons and do the actual killing. So either way, you've got a problem. You, your, your big problem here is there's a large group of community uh, of, of people in the Middle East who, who want uh, Jews dead. So really now... You're having you're having arguments about shit that, uh, in the big picture, to me, doesn't quite matter as much. So let's let's see what we can do about the stopping of the killing before we go. Hey, you knew, uh, yeah. So that's what just in, infuriates me. A lot of things infuriate me. Maybe that wasn't the right choice. It 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 bugs me. Okay. So now to the uh, the Hamas of it all, and the uh, the the people at, at at Harvard, and all the people the 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 and the, the, the oh the book learned people and oh where the there is a boatload of like uh, pro there's big pro Palestine marches and all this stuff and like you, you're gonna have a hard time making your case. With with a guy with a guy like me, uh, after I I found out what I found out, you know, it's like listen, the 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 good guys, the good guys uh, don't go to music festivals, and and, uh, and kill hundreds and hundreds of people, and and rape people, and take them as hostages, and kill families, and burn people alive. That's not you're, you're gonna you're never gonna tell me oh this is this is the work of uh of some misunderstood good guys i'll say this to you right now go fuck yourself in no uncertain terms and this this opening segment might be here i go i knew it was gonna happen i'm getting i'm gonna get it it, it boggles my mind it it really boggles my mind and hopefully this will shine a light on and I, hopefully a lot of people are waking up to this that's like the, the the Harvard thing, the Harvard school. After like just it's just horrifying the attack, and for them, oh, we're gonna sign a letter, and oh, Israel has to Israel they have to be measured in their their response. And here's the other one that that is just really uh, bugging the shit out of me. It's like whenever. Uh, like like Black Lives Matter or or the Hamas or, or you know they do some horrifying horrible shit and everybody's uh, on the left their first impulse is to ask we need we need to ask a question we need to think why would they why are they so angry that's the real question what 
drives people to this? Why are, why are the Black Lives Matter? Why are they rioting? Why, why are they burning up targets and scoot? We can, we have to get to the source of this. Boy, they weren't interested in that shit at all after January 6th. After January 6th? The law is the law. You you were in there. You were trespassing. You have to go to jail. You were trespassing. You were interrupting it, uh, government work. You go to jail. Don't talk to me. We're putting you in a cell. You can't see anybody. Solitary confinement. So uh, that's the uh, that's the 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 two tier justice system. Oh, why why are they angry? Why are we have to look? I have no, I have, I, I have no, I don't care. I don't. I don't. Uh, and then it's very, somebody else brought this uh, point up today. So last Friday was supposed to be like a day of like terror or some shit. Some like Hamas dude is like, here we go. It's on. I want friggin'. I want, you know, Hamas people and pro-Palestine people just to go on a freaking global jihad on Friday. And it didn't really, didn't really amount to that much. So I guess you need more, uh, more, more of an organization. You need more people in charge locally to pull something like, like that off, which makes you wonder about Black Lives Matter and, and how they were uh, able to organize. And before, before you go, wow, Mike, Black Lives Matter, let it go, let it go. Why don't you go check out, uh, uh, the Black Lives Matter, the, the BLM Chicago chapter. Check out their tweets lately. They, uh, these are, uh, these are not people who, uh, seem to, uh, to enjoy life in America as it looks right now. Okay. So I want to get into, uh, this next, next, oh my gosh, we're going so long. You know what we're going to do? Here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of break. We're going to take a wee bit of a break, and then we're going to come back. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to walk you through a little bit of my, uh, just what Israel's had to deal with. Just, just, we're going to do a little brief uh, history lesson of what Israel's been going through since, oh, I don't know, the, the, the moment that they became a country, the, the moment, it, it's going to blow your mind. It's going to blow your mind. So we're going to take a break. Uh, we're going to come back. We're going to have some laughs. I'm telling you, I got a, uh, I got a Tom Waits thing. Tom Waits. You know who Tom Waits is. Well, the piano has been drinking. Yeah. I got a little Tom Waits thing that is guaranteed to cheer me up. Uh, so we're going to get into uh, a little history of, of uh, the, 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 the country of Israel. We're going to get into some Speaker of the House stuff. We'll try to um, uh, talk some sexy Halloween in here too. But you know what? Here's what happens. There's going to be an extra segment on, on Patreon and Locals. And that's going to be a great thing. Ooh, what was that? That's a C. That's an A minor. We're gonna come back with more show. We're gonna come back, Elvis. So don't go. We're gonna come back. <laughs> All right, I'm just being silly. We'll be back. It's gonna be great. Hang in there. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a 
pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. We're back, which is a weird edit for you guys, because here's what happened. Like, so I I take a little break, and then I I went back to look at this uh, thing that I want to do, and it started making me laugh again. So, I got, it's a tease. It is a bit of a tease, but uh, I I find it delightful. (laughs) All right. But we got to go. We got to go into this. And and I'm going to make my point and we're going to move on. Uh, let's talk about the what what Israel's had to deal with. Now, don't don't forget. Don't forget, everybody, that uh, that everybody's pretty much been trying to kill the Jews since Bible times. <laughs> I have to I have to laugh at that because it's it's so uh, it's just so insane. It's just like, there was a point in time uh, where, where the Romans had had enough uh, and, and literally were just, you know, oh, the Jews, they knew, they knew sorcery and witchcraft. We, we must, we must uh, kill them all. It was, a, uh, it was a, uh, a, a, a form of food poisoning. I found this very interesting. I, I saw a program about this on the History Channel. So, uh, uh, the, the, the Jews and the, the, the kosher stuff, okay, so the you know, you can't cross pollinate plates. So, so, you know, meat is over here, dairy's over there and never the two shall meet. So, uh, because they were, and we're talking like Bible times here, you know, ancient Rome, because that like the bacteria from the meat wasn't cross pollinating with everything else. And that was a really good call, uh, hygienically. And, uh, there was a, a period in Rome where they were just like eating everything off of, you know, the, the same plate the the Romans were and there was some kind of bacterial infection and Romans were getting sick and they were dying left and right. And the Jew no one knew what was going on. They didn't know about bacteria and crap like that. So so the Romans are just dropping like flies and Shitting themselves to death. And meanwhile, you got the Jews running around like, woo. And then they're like, look, this, this is going to look bad. This is going to look really bad. So there was, uh, oh, you're their sorcery and we must kill them. So, so God bless you. God, God bless the Jewish people. We're like, that's less, that's horrifying. Like, 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 no, I, like, listen, uh, God told us to keep this stuff separate. I don't know. Maybe you guys want to do your dishes. That's all. Maybe you might want to just scrub a dub dub. Okay. So, uh, so then, uh, smash cut, uh, to World War II, right? Smash cut to World War II. Uh, we all know what the Nazis were up to and then their little, uh, plan of action. So it's the 1940s and, uh, there's a little hunk. There's a little hunk of nothing. Uh, in the Middle East, and I know that's where all this starts. Blah 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 blah. Uh, well, guess what? Uh, Crimea River. Fucking sorry, I wasn't I wasn't in on the decision, but here we are. So so uh, after after World War II, all these countries get together. The good guys who who won that shit get together, and they're like, okay, so here's here's gonna be this is gonna be the homeland for the Jews, and then. Uh, we stuck around, made sure everything was cool, and uh, holy guacamole, the, uh, the 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 Arabs didn't care for that at all. The the so now it's the it's like nineteen forty seven, and and here's we get into the uh, the uh, other countries now are like, hey, let's wipe these guys off the face of the planet. Let's so nineteen forty eight. 
started in, 19, in November of 47. <clears throat> uh, there you go. There, there's the first one. There's the Arab-Israeli war. So everybody, uh, everybody gets together. They, they try to get rid of uh, Israel. It doesn't work. Then in the, uh, the 1950s and the 60s, uh, you've got the Palestinian Fayyim insurgency. So there was attacks and all kinds of stuff. Then in 56, you got the, the Suez crisis and all kinds of uh, things going on there. Then in 67, you got the Six Day War, right? You got, you got Egypt, Jordan, and Syria, and all these other nations. They're like, oh, we're finally going to get rid of these guys. And oh, that didn't work. Then in, uh, then you've got another one. I have to laugh because it, this list just keeps going on. The War of Attrition. Then you've got the Yom Kippur War. Uh, then in, that was in uh, 73. Then you've got other stuff. The, another uh, insurgency started. And, and then there's a, a war in Lebanon. And then there's the, the first Infatada. And, and then there's the second Infatada. And then there's the Gaza War. And then in 2012, there's another freaking... 2014, there's another one. And then in 2021, there's another one. And now you have this one. It's like... Good Lord in heaven. It's literally every, every time you turn around. So if it was me, that's what I'm just saying. How much would you put up with? How much would would you as a human being just go, oh, I swear, I'm telling you, God, I can't believe that that Jewish people even even show up to the peace table. Ever. E ever. And it's, <clears throat> there's a, uh, a phrase that's been bandied about uh, quite a bit recently. Uh, and, it, and it makes, it seems to make sense to me. So if, uh, if the Palestinians were to put down their weapons, there would be peace. If the Jews were to put down their weapons, there'd be no more Jews. Kind of hard to argue with that logic. So, this is a good reminder that, that, that war is hell. The world is a dangerous place. Some people are just hell-bent on doing some evil shit. So, w when people start talking about, oh, uh, the, the Jewish response must be measured, and oh, oh, what they're doing now... And there's like this weird, uh, like body count shit going on. They're like, oh, so there's you know twelve hundred Jews dead. They've all, oh they've killed eighteen hundred people in Gaza. I guess what you're not gonna get a lot of sympathy from me. If I here's here's one little nugget I had off the top of my head. So, uh, if I were, and I I. I I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing at like a, just a guy like me literally trying to come up with solutions for crap like this. <clears throat> I would uh, maybe maybe divide up uh, Gaza into like, uh, I don't know, six equal hunks, right? Uh, and go, okay, so you guys did this attack. You you just lost a sixth of uh, of Gaza. That's, you have, you have forfeit that, and every time uh, the, these people pop up in an act of war, uh, you just take another hunk, and then and you're like, okay, so you're you're you've lost like half. We're, the deal is not going to get better. The, the violence is not going to solve your problem. If you want to hold on to whatever the fuck you've got left, you might want to just stop right now. That would be my uh, that would be that would be my solution. Every time, every time they pop off, you take half, you know, because it's like infinitely divisible. I mean, it would come down to like a one room, a one room apartment by the end. Like if every time Hamas attacked, you took half of Gaza, and then you took half. That's what I'm saying. And then here's a here's a good one to 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 think about. And this brings me back to the Joe Biden of it all and the Obama of it all, and how uh, we must 
uh, negotiate uh, with Iran because, oh, they want nuclear weapons. They want nuclear weapons. They want to join the community. Are you fucking crazy? Are you fucking crazy? Just look at the region and the and these these blood feuds that make the Hatfields and the McCoys uh, look like a game of pinochle. For thousands of years, it's been we want these people dead. We have to defend ourselves against these people, and we're at we're at war with this tribe and that. The Sunnis don't like the Shias, and the Shias don't like the Sunnis, and the Hamas doesn't like this, and they don't like like that. Is the last place on planet Earth you want nukes floating around? Any any uh. When when you look at what they're capable of, uh, just just with uh, for these these fuckers will throw rocks. They're out there with with slings and shit on a slow day. Then you oh we've got paragliders and military and we we got rifles and, and landmines. Nope nope. To here here's the answer. Uh, Iran. The answer is no. But we just want to have nuclear... Nope, nope, and no. There you go. How about that? <clears throat> That's how I feel about that. Now, this is a good time to uh, to tell you what was making me laugh. Here's what they do. Here's what... Here's what this is a... Uh, and then we're going to talk about uh, Jim Jordan and the Speaker of the House, and America First, and Joe Biden, and all that other good shit. But there's a, a little bit of a, I got, we have to take a moment, we have to take a breath here, and, and I'm just going to say what's been making me laugh at the beginning of the show, at the beginning of this segment, and, and quite possibly uh, for many, many days to come. I was thinking about, you know in horror movies, in horror movies, how they'll have like a kid doing like a, a sing. It's usually like a happy song, but they'll they'll sing it slow and it gets creepy. You know, a uh, bad a bad example, uh, like Jingle Bells, right? Like Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, Jingle. Oh, it's a horror movie. It's always Jingle Bells, Jingle, and it gets creepy. So then, I thought, what song? Uh, could I do that with to like uh, like make a horror uh, sound? And I was thinking of the song uh, uh, "Sunshine, Lollipops, and Rainbows." Everything that's wonderful. It'd be a good one to do the. It'd be a, the. It would be the classic. You know, have a little have a little kid. Sunshine, Lolly, and you can hear it now as I do it. It sounds like Adam Sandler, right? <laughs> So you got the comedy of that. Sunshine, shine, lollipops and rainbows. Everything that wonderful is what I fear when we're together. Kind of funny, but there's no thing there. This is what set me over the edge. Tom Waits. Tom, if you don't know who Tom Waits is, get on the internet. Uh, Tom Waits. Well, the piano has been drinking. This goes back to the Shalala thing we were talking about weeks ago. He's got a song called Jersey Girl. Shalala, la, la, la. I'm in love with. So this is Tom Waits singing Sunshine Lollipops. <laughs> You gotta do it slow so it's kind of creepy. Sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows. Everything wonderful is what I feel when we're together. It's like. Like a, uh, like an old timey, like a, a hobo starting a campfire by, by the railroad tracks, <laughs> or, or walking through 
like some freaking bombed out city. <laughs> walking, walk, walking through like bombed out Gaza. <laughs> Just looking, finding stuff. Maybe slower. Sun shining, lollipops and rainbows everything. <laughs> it was It was the it was the everything. Ah, oh, Tom Waits is is a is a freaking brilliant songwriter. It's just his voice is so <laughs> I got to do it one more. I'm going to do one more and then we're going <laughs> to and then we're going to we're going to move on to some Jim Jordan GOP uh sp speaker of the house stuff. America first. Uh, I'm going to try to make it as creepy as I can. Sunshine lollipops and rainbows everything that's wonderful <laughs> is what I feel when we're together brighter <laughs> I can't That is some funny shit. Oh, I want I want to see Ted Cruz going up the Capitol Hill steps. <laughs> Sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows, everything that's wonderful and what I feel when we're together. into Scooby-Doo. All right. That's enough. That was self-indulgent. But uh, uh, there we have it. All right. Speaker of the House, Jim Jordan. I don't have a song for Jim Jordan. I really don't. Uh, I don't know if he's song worthy yet. We we shall see. Hey, listen. This is just me just being... I, 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 uh, I dig this uh, Speaker of the House fight. I really do. People, they nominated Stevie Scalise. And everybody was like, ooh, no, Stevie Scalise. Ooh, no, Stevie Scalise. Okay, all right, whatever. Uh, and now they're going, oh, it's going to be Jim Jordan. Oh, it's Jim Jordan. I don't know if Jordan's going to get the votes. But uh, I, I'm not I'm not afraid of the pandemonium. I'm not worried about how it looks. Uh, I don't want it to be Hakeem Jeffries. That's for sure. But we have, like, very, uh, very real problems in this country. Uh, you know, the, 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 the spending, these horrible programs that don't work. The, the, the border that's just like Swiss cheese, worse than Swiss cheese. Now, here is uh, a little something that I didn't know, and, and hopefully you'll find this, this interesting. The, the House Speaker, I didn't know the, there was an expectation uh, about being the, the Speaker of the House and, and, and raising money. Like, uh, the, the there's this uh, Peter Schweitzer guy who's uh, always writing the books, and there's a, a little article about him here that I found. Uh, uh, Schweitzer reminds American voters that the Speaker is expected to raise at least $20 million per year for their party. Uh, a task that, that many people say can take up like 75 to 80% of their time. Nancy Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi was a prodigious fundraiser for the Democrats. She generated about $32 million for her party while she served. So the Speaker, huh? that's the, that's the expectation of the Speaker of the House? That's fucked up. How about, how about you do this? How about, uh, 
How about shouldn't that shouldn't that be uh, the the GOP's job? Like shouldn't shouldn't the the like the DNC shouldn't they be like what shouldn't shouldn't uh, people in Congress be doing uh, Congress shit? Like figuring out budgets and and slashing uh, the size of government. I don't I don't. It is a it's a disgusting little secret. That, oh, so you have to set the agenda for what the House is going to do. You have to look at this legislation. You have to do the budgets. You have to figure out who's on what committee. You have to make sure that that shit's above board and all that's good. Oh, and meanwhile, if you could if you could go out and do fundraisers and raise money, like, no, no, I don't like that at all. I don't. So, so yay, hooray. Now, now we know that. Now we know that little piece of... Uh, awesomeness so let's make that stop happening so ah uh, any time that you can point out uh the dysfunction that is uh our our modern uh federal government i'm i'm all for it i'm all for it and i want i will say it again ladies and gentlemen I want to go bit by bit, budget piece by budget piece. There's no way it's this hard. There is no way. And and I I I I, will, I shall repeat myself when they're like, "Oh, but what about the military? What about the brave men and women?" Okay, what were they making in 2019? What were their pre-rona numbers? Cuz that's what we're writing the check for today. Military, figure that shit out. Uh, FBI, got some bad news for you guys. Got some bad news. Yeah, we're, we're going to close down. We're going to close down the whole show. Let's do a little bit of uh, uh, freedom of uh, information requests and all that stuff. And Joe Biden. There is now, there's a dude... Uh, who I believe works for uh, uh, Breitbart. And uh, they have a, has a new book out called Breaking Biden, Exposing the Hidden Forces and Secret Money Machine Behind Joe Biden, His Family, and His Administration. So this guy's making the rounds. Uh, and that's, that's awesome. But in, uh, in Marlowe's book, uh, they're saying, he's saying, that they're they're looking at uh, Barisma because that's the that's the easiest one to figure out. That like okay, so all the dots are there. Okay, so you've got this guy at Barisma, Hunter Biden's at Barisma. This money is exchanged. This email is sent. This deposit's made. Ba 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 ba. However, he's saying that there are so many more countries going on. Uh, Marlo says, I think the Burisma one is always important to come back to because this is the clearest example. It's the easiest to document. It's bribery uh, and government policies were altered specifically to pay the Biden family money. Hunter gets this and this and this. But there are multiple countries where I guess the same thing was going on. They're, they're changing policies. <clears throat> Once you start taking money and changing uh, policies, you can't do it. Gonna get impeached. You gotta get impeached. You gotta go to jail. You gotta go to jail. You know why Tom Waits sings like that? Because it's freaking kind of cool. And it's easy to do. And people forgive you. What was I doing earlier? You're gonna need a gun. I hope you got a gun. When life is not so fun, don't run. Get a gun. You're gonna need a gun. Boy, Second Amendment. <laughs> Israel, Israel, Israel. This is just like... The best, uh, it's a great example of, of the Second Amendment being so important. 
to be able to defend yourself. I love the stories. I'm going to go a little long here. <clears throat> you, uh, I've, I've come across a couple of stories uh, about like, and it's usually like both of these have been like women. Uh, God bless them. Uh, in, in Israel, like this girl, she's like freaking 24, 25 years old. And she was, you know, in charge of the, the defense of this kibbutz. And then there's another story I just read about this girl who's in the uh, Israeli defense force. And she heard something that wasn't right. And she went and she got her buddy. And boy, she's trained with the weaponry. Her buddy was trained. They posted up and just fucking defended themselves. I love it. I love it. All right, so here's what we're gonna do uh, because we've 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 gone over. I was very indulgent with uh, with my tunelage. We're gonna go to uh, to Patreon and uh, talk a little bit about uh, toxic masculinity and some statistics that I've just found out that are holy shit. Uh, gonna answer a lot of questions you're gonna need a gun it's the same song you're gonna want a gun and then we're gonna talk about the the marvels we're gonna talk a little bit about uh one piece and south park and uh i hope you like the halloween booties here we go i've got so many you know we do the uh uh, the Tatas on Tuesday, which I still don't, I'm not a fan of the Tata Tuesday, the name. I like Titty Tuesday. That seems like a little bit more honest. Tits are great. Love them. Big fan. All shapes, all sizes. Just wonderful. And then, you know, there's a, a an also a fondness for the booties, the butts. Just adorable. Just butts are fantastic. Tits are great. Ass is great. Uh, she's my little rock, made me think of that song. It's a song by the Rolling Stones, my TNA. Uh, so here's what I've, so I, I collect the, 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 you know, I come across, uh, pictures of people send them to me like, Hey, here's a great, send them, send away. Uh, if you've got a, a, a fun, uh, booty shot. So I have about, I have about seven different pictures of, uh, girls who have painted their, their cute little booties, uh, and big booties like jack-o'-lanterns, <laughs> which is fun, right? But I, I, I've got a ton of them, so I might have to double up on the the Saturday booties. I think we only have a few more weeks till uh, Halloween, and I don't know. Maybe if are are they painting their? I should look into that. See if they're uh, painting their tits. Like <laughs> I know there's like uh, Christmas titties that are like rain rain. Reindeers and there's antlers involved. Those are fun. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, Halloween and booties and uh, uh, it's, it's going to be Marvel talk, uh, some toxic masculinity talk, and some some entertainment business. I think uh, they're finally learning that they've gone too woke. And then there's, I have a warning for you. It's not going to stop. They're still going to be woke. They're just going to slow it down a little bit. They're just going to disguise it a little bit better. So uh, come on over to Patreon. Come on over to Locals. And uh, there's going to be a whole lot of fun there. More show. More wonderfulness. We got to go out with this. Tom Waits. Oh, you know what we could do? It's not as fun. It's not as fun as sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows. It's when I say everything. Everything that's wonderful is what I feel when we're together. Then a lucky penny when you're listening to the show. I'm glad you're here and I feel so fine. Just to know that you enjoyed the show. 
thanks for being here. You guys are great. Then and thanks for listening. A lot of people listening. You're fantastic. Oh, why are those pants still on? Ta ta. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810.